In this video, I'm gonna show you how to reframe and resize your video content for the social media platforms. Hey guys, Dave Curley with Church Media Guys, and if you want to learn how to use and exploit media and technology so that you can take the gospel to the world, start now by clicking that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss a thing. If you're going to be putting video on social media platforms, the first rule is to do it natively, which means don't take a YouTube video and like you know, copy the link and paste the link in Facebook and then send it out and stuff because, you know, they want you to play in their own sandboxes and that's important. Now, rule number two is that each one of these platforms has a different format that they want their videos in. They're, you know, some of them, they're mobile, some of them are like, you know, like YouTube is meant for like, you know, widescreen content so that you can like look at, like watch a movie and stuff like that. You know, Facebook, you know, most people sit there with their phone going up and down with their fingers and, you know, and it's a vertical screen so you want the video to take up a lot of that vertical screen Instagram everything square on Instagram stories everything's all vertical and weird looking if you're using the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro that's Premiere Pro CC 2020 then it's very easy to do this Adobe has a tool that uses some of their their artificial intelligence and stuff that you can say hey go reframe this for Instagram and you know it's reframed for Instagram, it looks great. Uh, but a lot of people haven't upgraded or they're not using Adobe, they're using Final Cut or they're using Filmora or, or iMovie or anything else out there. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do it manually. This is the way I've been doing it for years actually. I, I do a lot of TV shows, I do social for a lot of different TV shows and all this, and I've sort of developed this really quick formula that I use for doing it. It's very easy. I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get over to the computer. Okay, here's one example of why auto reframe doesn't always work and we would have to do things manually. Obviously, if you don't have auto reframe available to you, then doing it manually is the best way to do it anyway. Um, here is a, a quick little testimony video that I shot at our church with one of our families. And, uh, you know, it's 16 by 9. It's it's HD. Um, I did some digital zooming. I shot it with, with just one camera at one um, angle. You know, just that was it. Th that shot that you see right there is it. So I did some digital zooming. Like, that's the shot that you see right there. Now, when, when you use auto reframe, you can have it um, automatically make all the decisions for you. Or you can tell it, you know, hey, I have digitally you know, resized this, so don't resize this, use my settings, uh, which is something that we definitely want in a case like this. Otherwise it would be, you know, the same shot that would just look horrible. So I, I did it real quick. As you can see right there, she's talking, so it's following her, which is good. Uh, with him, it's zoomed up to him. But in this shot, this is a two shot. So when you take a look at this two shot, I thought it was weird. That really worked out well for So see, that's supposed to be a two shot and auto rate frame thinks that it's supposed to be focusing on her instead of him. And, you know, through the through the course of it, it zooms over and back and forth. You know, it's just it just doesn't look good. It's not going to look good. You know, here's here's the the very first shot. When we take a look at it after we come back from the frame, uh, the, the title frame. I just felt Tate Springs was too big. There wouldn't be a place for us to serve. And so we just so it's a it's a two it's a two shot of them and what the AI decided was, was too big this. there wouldn't be a place for us to serve and so we just kept looking and the Lord kept leading us back here and so she's real pretty said, but we don't okay, need to look Lord, at her while he's talking be... so anyway you can see it just it doesn't work so the fix for this I'm gonna go ahead and kill that the fix for this is to do it manually so one of the easiest ways to do this is to just make a new timeline based off of all this. In fact, to actually like embed this entire sequence into another timeline. And here is here is their sequence. And if I just drag this to the new sequence button there, it makes a new sequence that automatically, you know, it's it's named, but it's if you if you scroll over, you'll see it's all the same stuff. It's all the same dimensions. See, 1920, 1920, you know, it's it's just a it's an identical copy. It's just that that timeline, this one, is nested inside this one. And that's what that is right there. If I double click on it, it's going to bring up that one. I'm going to rename this real quick. And I'm just going to call this one one-to-one. Um, -one. 
Now, it's all set for us to use. The problem is, though, the dimensions are not right. That's 1920. I need it to be like 1080 by 1080. So if you right-click on it and go to Sequence Settings, in this case, I'm doing this in Premiere. It may be different than either of the, the apps that you're using. If you're doing it in Filmora, there's another way to change the settings for the sequence that you're editing on. Um, if you're in Final Cut, you need to make a different sequence with the appropriate uh, dimensions that you need. Okay, But doing it manually in Adobe Premiere like this, it's real easy. I just right-click on the sequence and change it. So I'm going to change it to custom and the time base is going to be the same the frame size I'm going to make 1080 by 1080 which is vertical one to one there see and I'm going to change you know you can leave it as iframe MPEG for your previewing stuff or you know I always just change mine make it 422 that'll be fine 1080 by 1080 great and look, changes to the preview file format, preview file size require all preview files to be deleted. The operation cannot be done. Okay, that's fine. So now I have a piece of footage, an entire timeline to be exact, sitting inside this frame. Now what I need to do is size it. So I can go to my scale and find out just where the best point is. So that actually looks pretty good. Now we got this banding across the top here, but basically, you know, it looks it looks good like that. But how do we fix the banding? It's really easy. All you need to do is just duplicate this layer. Now each app is going to have its own way of doing it. So you know, however you do it in Filmora, however you do it in uh, Premiere, duplicate that video layer. In my case, I'm just going to unlink the audio and the video from each other by right clicking on it and choosing unlink and now I've got the video layer and the audio layer separate from each other which now lets me copy the video layer activate the one above it and paste it in and since it's up against the edge here they're all automatically synced up with each other now this bottom layer I'm just gonna make it big I can make it a hundred percent if I want I can make it larger what have you okay and then I need to blur it. So let's just do a Gaussian blur. Come on. There you go. Gaussian blur. Um, I've got some presets already set up for that. Uh, but, you know, you just go down to grab your Gaussian blur and then set your blurriness. I like to use, you know, 60, 70 or so. I like that. I think that looks good. Now, the key for this, um, we have this area right back here that's like the same color palette and all that, that that the rest of the video is, but there's no real differentiation between there, and it could actually kind of get distracted. You'll be looking at what the blur is. You know, that we want them focusing on these two people talking. We don't want them focusing on what's this motion happening back here. So my key to that is I always drop the opacity. Um, just set the opacity to 50%. So the because we're on a uh, timeline with a background that's black, then setting it to 50% or even better lets us take the focus away from the blurriness, and now it just basically becomes a part of the video, but the main action is still happening here, and that's what you're going to be focusing on. So now when we look at it... And that class just adopted our kids, and I mean, even to... Because they're at half of... And it's really not distracting. Now, when we render this out, we've got a one-to-one. -one file that we could then upload to Instagram and to Facebook. Hey, in just a second, I'm going to show you why sometimes I have to like do things manually like this, even though I am using Adobe and all, and do have the reframe thing. Sometimes it just breaks. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But if you're getting value out of this, if you're learning something, then please leave a comment and actually tell me what software are you using? What do you edit in? Are you, you know, Premiere, Filmora or iMovie, iMovie Pro, uh, what's that called? Final Cut, whatever. If you would just leave a comment below and let me know. Obviously, I want you to subscribe and hit that notification so that you know you can find out when we're doing new stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna show you another use case for why I can't just use auto reframe all the time. Um, this is actually kind of frustrating. Let me show you. This is a show that's been pre-produced, so I was given literally the entire show, which includes the commercials, everything, okay? So I, I don't have any control over any of these shots or anything. Thing, but I got to make it social. Well, 
I've identified a segment in here on axe throwing. And when we scrub through it, you can see that there, there she is in front of the door. Then she goes in. There's some B-roll of people doing stuff. Now here's the guy that she's talking to. And I want to use auto reframe to do it. So I've, I've found the area, the, the, the segment that I want to use. And I'm just going to drag it down here and make a new sequence. And now here is my sequence with just this one little piece in here. And let's let auto reframe do its thing and see if it works, which I know it's not, but I'll show you. Auto frame the sequence. Uh, we don't need to nest the clips or anything. And hit create. And it's analyzing. And there you go. Now, as we start scrolling through here, watch what happens. Let's see, I'm going to get... Yes, we are known for our lumberjacks, and the province I grew up in is home to the world's largest axe. See that thing? It is just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's a whole bunch of nonsense. It doesn't work. And then when we get inside, some of the clips it works with. When John Collins first tried axe throwing, well, see, I mean, look, it's just it's just moving and moving and moving. It looks horrible. It's useless. It's not doing me any good. It's a waste of time. So, blah, I'm done with that. So, what have I done? I've made a Facebook square template and it's 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 actually really easy um, you just make a template or make a timeline so I'll, I'll do a new sequence and I'm gonna call it Facebook and then I'm gonna right click on it and go to the settings and then I'm going to make it custom and we're gonna make it 1080 by 1080 and we're going to make it square pixels, which makes it now one-to-one. -one. No fields. And we're going to make it QuickTime. And we'll make it Pro and 1080 by 1080. And hit OK. And there is our timeline. Okay? Now, so all I have to do is take this clip. And I drop it in. Now, it's telling me, hey, the clip does not match the sequence settings change the sequence to match the clip settings I can change it and now I'll have you know where the clip and the sequence match each other I don't want to do that keep the existing settings and there it is it's already shrunk it down for me now I just need to determine how much I can scale it up to, to take up everything do, do, do I want to keep the little bug here does it matter let's take a look at a couple of the two shots okay well we got that thing coming in so we know we got to see it and let's go take a look at a two shot with them so when he's inter or when she's interviewing it, yeah. So, you know, we could probably scale it up just a little bit more if we want, and that's that. So now all I need to do is unlink, copy it, paste it, line it up. There's actually shortcuts for doing that, and then I'm going to make this one on underneath a little bit larger. And then I'm going to go to effects and type in Gaussian blur. Drop that on. I suggest you make a preset if you have the ability to do that in your program. Uh, we'll set the blurriness up about like that. And then I'm just going to turn the opacity down. And now I've got my clip. Is home to the world. And then we get inside. The roll looks the good. Going towards the wood. That when our family did that, we thought. This is a lot of fun. So it looks good, and it's really an easy way to do it. Now, with the editor that you're using, if you can make presets, you can actually get this down really fast. I mean, really fast. In fact, let me let me show you just how fast I do it, because I've set up a preset for the Gaussian blur. I've set up a preset for the opacity, and I've actually got a shortcut for duplicating the track. It's, it's built into Adobe, so you could do the exact same thing. But it's really fast. I'm going to show you real quick. So this is a daily show that I do. I've got five episodes of the show, and basically we each show has four segments that are 10 minutes long, and then we will take social clips from each of these segments for the guests to be able to use on their social platforms. So what I've done is when I made my template for this show that everything is based off of, I also made a social uh, time timeline in here, sequence in here, that I just start stacking in the social clips. And when I get a social clip done, then I just go to the end of that clip, mark an out point, go to the beginning of that clip, mark an end point, and then I'm ready to render it. Now, getting to this point is actually really easy. Um, all I do is 
identify the clip that I want. Let's see. Here is a, a clip that we're going to use. So I'm just going to Command C, copy that, go over to the social tab or social sequence, go to the next in line. I'm going to paste it in. Then I'm going to use my Alt key and I'm going to drag that uh, video layer up and it duplicates it. So now I have the video layer, two video layers, and I've got the audio layer. And the I need to find where I can where I can scale. So I just sort of scrub through. Okay, the, that that wide shot doesn't move or anything. So that's what we'll base it off of. So I'm just going to scale the wide shot, knowing that when we get to a close up, it's obviously framed up good. Now I just need to enlarge the layer underneath it, and then I need to use my presets. I've got an opacity preset and I've got a Gaussian blur preset and I drag them both on there and it's done. I'm now ready to mark my in and out points and then render it. And I even made a preset for my rendering and there it is. It's got all the settings that I need. Um, all that's done and I render, I name it and I render it out. It really is really simple. <laughs> Now I'm using Adobe Premiere and, and have been for years and now that they've got the auto reframe tool it's, it's really easy for me to do it but you can see that with some of this content it's kind of hard it, it doesn't it, it just the, the AI doesn't work right it doesn't it, it just it it doesn't know what it's looking at basically so that's why I have to do it manually so I'm actually in the camp where I've got to do some of it automatically and some of it manually and so if you'll follow this little template basically that I've got where you set up a timeline for a specific format you'll find it goes really fast in fact the hardest part I think for me is actually finding the clip that I want to share not the physically making the clip even though I'm doing it all manually now if you are using the latest version of Adobe the reframe tool is there in fact if you'll take a look at this video over here you can see me walk through it it's, it's really easy to use and I can show you some perfect use cases for it so take a look at that and if you want to see something else that's just dadgum awesome then take a look at that video because we made it for you now let's get on to the next video